my name is Amata, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're here to discuss once again KB Lake X and Skylake X. Now, you may recall that a while back we discussed the rumours that Intel is planning on launching those very same two architectures on the X299 chipset. Now, the reason behind KB Lake X appearing on a HEDT platform is not really all that clear, especially when we're talking about a quad core chip, but it's fairly easy to theorise that we're looking at a budget orientated high end CPU. As for the i7 7740K, that isn't just a 7700K refresh. It actually requires a whole new socket, which is LGA2066, and of course, a new motherboard. Another quite important thing to note when you're talking a com direct comparison to KB Lake S, there is no integrated GPU. But aside from that, we do have a slightly higher base clock, 100 megahertz to be exact, and an increased TDP from 91 watts to 112. Now, I'm sure all of you are wondering what exactly the source of all this is, as of course that does very much change how legit it feels, and it's, this came from the Sysoft database, which means that it's probably accurate. Now, we see some interesting results from this particular finding on the Sysoft database, and um, just for clarification, they were using the ASRock X299 i7 motherboard, and this is a motherboard that no one has even seen or even heard about, so, you know, the fact that it was on that motherboard doesn't really help all, all that much, really. But we do have a couple of results, and they do show that the new CPU from Intel is actually pretty closely keeping in step with the Ryzen 5 1600X. Sorry, not 1600X, just the 1600. But let's talk a little more on what exactly all those specification means. The higher TDP basically means that in theory it'll be able to run at higher clock speeds when overclocking which is definitely something that's going to be a value add for a lot of people. And the fact that it's on four cores as already mentioned is a little bit strange. It is a bit unusual for a four core eight thread for Intel to be on an X platform usually the Broadwell E or just E platforms in general I suppose I should say are six cores or more. Now, you might ask, well, what's a potential reason for this decision? This is probably a cost-cutting measure. It's to reduce the cost of entry to have this particular chip and board to better compete with the Ryzen lineup, since, of course, 4, 6, and 8 are all working on AM4 when it comes to AMD. So maybe Intel are trying to come up with their own answer to that, say, hey, we've got our own unified board too, where you can have X, Y, or Z running on it. And of course, you know, you've got Z being the high powered one and X being the lower powered one and so on and so forth. Now, as I said earlier regarding the benchmarks, which were helpfully posted by a video card, it does compete well, as I already said, in synthetic benchmarks with Ryzen CPUs, but Ryzen, unsurprisingly, comes out ahead in multi-threaded applications. But again, these benchmarks were helpful in getting a, an idea, a preview, a snapshot, if you will, of the performance. It doesn't necessarily help us all that much when it comes to how is this going to perform in terms of gaming. Now, Intel are unsurprisingly going to be offering 6, 8 and 10 core configurations when it comes to Skylake X. So again, they are very much trying to keep in lockstep with AMD and compete with them on the whole unified platform thing. As of course, you know, as long as you've got AM4, you're pretty set. Obviously, the different motherboards have different features or different limitations if you're going for the lower end ones, but you still can technically run everything in that family on the same family of boards. This basically means that you've got some good upgradability in the future so that if you start out with the lower end one, you can still technically keep that motherboard, whatever it happens to be, and go over the higher end one and not have to worry, although of course it would be advisable to. I'm just saying that you technically could cut that corner if you so wish, so this gives more upgradability options in the future. Now again, this is all based on rumour, so as always, take everything discussed here with a pinch of salt, but given the source, we can probably put quite a lot of credence in it, but until this is officially confirmed, you should always maintain just that healthy pinch of scepticism. 
So this definitely means that the fight between AMD and Intel is not yet over. As I said, these benchmarks put a pretty, put it, has a pretty close battle between this particular upcoming CPU and Ryzen 5. But again, when in gaming, which obviously require require higher clock speeds which Intel generally come out ahead on we might see different results or we might see Ryzen being ahead again we will only have to wait and see unfortunately all we have for now is synthetic benchmarks which are helpful but again not the complete picture as always thank you very much for watching do remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already it does help out a great deal your support is highly appreciated and I'll see you next time